Did you know that in the world of online shopping, platforms like Wish, AliExpress, and New Player and Tamu are stirring up a storm? Ever wondered how they pull off those unbelievable deals? It's like a digital treasure hunt, and today we're about to unveil the secrets behind those jaw-dropping prices. In the dynamic landscape of the early 2010s, Silicon Valley was the breeding ground for startups revolutionizing how people connect and engage. Think Uber, Airbnb, and the dawn of the sharing economy. Among these pioneers, Wish emerged, injecting a fresh promise into the mix, making online shopping accessible for everyone. The platform didn't just want to sell products, it wanted to democratize e-commerce, bridging the gap between overseas sellers and budget-conscious consumers. Wish rode the wave of Silicon Valley's platform craze, where connecting parties and taking a cut from every transaction became the norm. The promise of democratizing e-commerce resonated with consumers looking for affordability and variety. However, little did we know that this very platform craze would become the fertile ground for the entrance of a bold newcomer, Tamu. To understand the genesis of Tamu, we need to rewind the clock and explore where the roots of this platform craze took hold. Now let's enter the world of the online dollar store where Tamu, AliExpress and Wish are reshaping the rules of the game. Unlike e-commerce giants burdened by warehouses and complex delivery systems, these platforms embrace a different strategy. They sidestep the logistics headache by letting international sellers handle the nitty gritty. The secret source, an unexpected advantage rooted in outdated legislation that makes shipping from China to the West remarkably cheaper than domestic shipping. Tamu, AliExpress and Wish dance to a different rhythm in the digital dollar store realm. Straying from the norm, they empower sellers from across the globe, transforming each transaction into a virtual bargain hunt. But the real game changer lies in their logistical finesse. Shipping a puzzle in the world of e-commerce becomes a pivotal factor in their success. Unlike their heavyweight counterparts, these platforms leverage a global network of sellers, turning the logistics game into a strategic advantage. Now let's dissect the magic behind their logistics. Shipping from China to the West emerges as a silent hero, slashing costs unexpectedly. While shipping within the US poses financial challenges, outdated legislation unintentionally provides a golden ticket for Tamu, AliExpress and Wish. This unexpected advantage allows them to offer prices that feel like steals, rewriting the rules of the online shopping game. In the digital dollar store landscape, shipping becomes a silent influencer, shaping not just the platforms, but also the choices of millions of online shoppers. Tamu, AliExpress and Wish, armed with their lean logistics approach and the cost-effective allure of cross-border shipping, have rewritten the script. The digital treasure hunt is no longer just about finding deals, it's about navigating a world where the unexpected advantages of shipping become the secret source creating a unique and budget-friendly online shopping experience for all. Now let's unravel the intriguing world of postal subsidies. The Universal Postal Union, initially designed to streamline cross-border shipping, has become a fascinating element in the e-commerce landscape. As technology advanced, the UPU, rather than fading away, continued to play a significant role by offering substantial subsidies for shipping from developing countries, particularly China, to more developed ones. This quirk in the postal system became a pivotal factor in Wish's business model, allowing Chinese sellers to ship their products at astonishingly low rates. It's a twist in the tale of global trade, a postal subsidy puzzle that Wish strategically leverages to offer consumers products at dirt cheap prices. Wish's reliance on this postal abnormality highlights the ever-present influence of unexpected factors in the world of online commerce. The seemingly outdated system of postal subsidies became the backbone of a business model, challenging traditional notions of shipping costs and fostering cross-border trade. This unique aspect of the global postal system not only fuels Wish's affordability, but also prompts us to rethink the intricacies of international trade dynamics. Now let's dive into the distinct realm of Wish's shopping experience. It's not your run-of-the-mill online store, it's a virtual treasure hunt. Picture landing on Wish.com and suddenly you're immersed in a feed of seemingly random yet irresistibly cheap products. But is there more beneath the surface of this unconventional shopping adventure? Wish boldly claims to be a disruptor, catering to low-income individuals and challenging the established norms of e-commerce. It beckons users to question not just what they're buying, but the very privilege of their purchasing choices. 
Wish's shopping experience transcends the conventional boundaries of e-commerce. It's not about neatly organized product categories or curated collections. Instead, it's a journey where each click unveils a new surprise. The platform positions itself as a champion for affordability, daring users to question their shopping habits and consider the accessibility of online shopping for those on a budget. The unconventional discovery-based approach challenges the status quo, urging us to rethink the essence of the online shopping experience beyond the usual norms. As we navigate Wish's unique digital landscape, it prompts us to reflect on the democratization of shopping and raises intriguing questions about privilege in the world of e-commerce. In the fast-paced world of online commerce, Wish's meteoric rise has met a sudden halt, and the billion-dollar dream has proven to be more mirage than reality. Today, public markets have laid bare the truth behind Wish's extravagant valuations. The once-soaring platform saw its valuation plummet by over 99%, shedding light on the fundamental flaws in its business model. The absence of warehouses, logistics, or tangible assets became glaringly evident exposing the unsustainability of a platform built solely on promises of future profitability through sheer growth. As we dissect the downfall of Wish, the question looms, what were the critical missteps that led to this drastic plunge, and what does it mean for the future of online platforms built on similar models? Now let's shift our focus to a veteran player in the online shopping arena, AliExpress. Unlike Wish, AliExpress has been navigating the e-commerce landscape for a considerable time. What sets it apart, and why does it seem to follow a more sustainable trajectory? The answer lies in a strategic move by Alibaba, AliExpress's parent company. AliExpress, despite not being a profit-churning machine on its own, enjoys a safety net. Its losses are subsidized by Alibaba's other profitable ventures. Alibaba's shrewd business strategy positions AliExpress as part of a more extensive ecosystem where losses in one area are compensated by gains in another. This safety net allows AliExpress to weather the storm of not turning a profit on its own, providing stability and resilience. It sparks a debate, is this a smart and calculated move to ensure long-term sustainability, or does it pose potential risks for Alibaba's overall business dynamics? AliExpress, with its unique positioning in the broader Alibaba ecosystem, prompts us to explore the delicate balance between risk and reward in the ever-evolving landscape of online commerce. In the vast landscape of online commerce, a new disruptor emerges, Tamu. This isn't your run-of-the-mill online store, it's an audacious experiment conceived out of Pinodicchio's urgency to sustain its remarkable growth and venture into uncharted markets. Unlike its predecessors, Tamu isn't content with the status quo. It's a bold move, a strategic leap into uncharted territory, fueled by the imperative to keep growing. Pindioduo's urgency is the driving force behind Tamu's creation, emphasizing the platform's experimental nature. It's not merely about offering products, it's a deliberate attempt to challenge established norms. Tamu is not afraid to burn through cash, positioning itself as a provocateur in the online commerce landscape. The promise of crazy speed, unbeatable prices and unmatched value isn't just a marketing gimmick, it's a manifesto, a declaration of intent to rewrite the rules governing online transactions. As we witness Tamu's entry into the scene, the question lingers, can this daring move truly rewrite the rules of online commerce, or is it stepping into uncharted territory with uncertain outcomes? The e-commerce arena is no stranger to innovators and disruptors, but Tamu's boldness sets it apart. It's a journey into the unknown, an exploration of whether an experimental venture can reshape the very fabric of online shopping. The calculated risk of burning through cash isn't just a strategy, it's a statement that challenges traditional business paradigms. PDD's urgency to sustain growth becomes the driving force behind Tamu, beckoning us to contemplate the future of online shopping. Can this audacious move reshape the game, or will it face challenges that prove insurmountable? The story of Tamu is not just about crazy speed, unbeatable prices and unmatched value, it's about the potential transformation of the entire online commerce landscape. The story of Tamu is one that unfolds in real time, daring to question norms, embrace risks and venture into uncharted territories in the ever-evolving world of digital transactions. As we wrap up this roller coaster journey through the worlds of Wish, AliExpress and Tamu, it's essential to remember that those cheap online deals might come with unseen costs. The allure of budget shopping often masks the intricate web of complexities in the global economy. 
We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.